Good morning. Great to see you all here. Great to be here. We're a buzz of information today. We have a few announcements that we want to share, and Kathy's coming up to share one with us. Lord Hill United Methodist Church. Good morning. Thank you. Good morning. It is my joy to share some information with you this morning about our upcoming women's retreat. It is entitled Lavender Spa, and although we won't be doing pedicures, manicures, or sitting in a hot tub, we will be relaxing and enjoying each other. Um, with some Bible study, some worship time, a little music, food, of course, and mostly basking in the love of our Lord. So I encourage all of the ladies in our church to consider being in attendance. I will be out in the back uh, with our sign-up sheet. The uh, retreat begins on Friday evening at 5.30. We will have a nice pizza dinner that evening, and there will be our initial session. On Saturday morning, we begin um, with our uh, breakfast at around 8.30, and there will be a, an additional five sessions on Saturday. So if you feel you could at least come to one or two of the sessions, you can't make a whole day of it, we will take you for as much of the retreat as you may come to. Um, and I will uh, be happy to answer any questions you have after worship. Thank you. Thank you. Next week, um, Kingdom's Kids will begin again starting at 4 in the afternoon. So mark that on your calendar and seek to show your support and assistance. So next week, October 22nd, Kingdom Kids begins their fall session. Any other announcements? Yes, Patty. Thank you, Patty. Any other announcements? Seeing no one trying to get my attention, let us take this time to prepare for the morning worship.
and then I'll set this in the back. Is everybody good? I'm so glad to see you all today. Okay, I'm going to set this right there. <gasps> wow, Shan, you've got a really big box of crackers. So, um, I have hungry friends. Does anybody here like crackers? Yeah. Oh, no way. Whoa, wait a minute. That's a big box. But you said I was going to put my crackers in a big bag, all the crackers in a bag of table. Well, but you know, there's enough to share in here. And that bag, I know they're yours, but that bag isn't big enough. You would need a lot more bags than that. Oh. Well, we can get bigger bags, and we can get more bags, and I can put them all in the bag. I know that the cart will open up because these get cagey after a while. But if I put them in bags that close, then they'll stay very safe, and I can have them a gazillion days from now. I know, but I'm hungry. Is anybody else hungry? Yeah, I mean, I'm hungry. I, I think you need to share. But you can't eat all those. Wow. You know what? I think that you need to think about what God wants us to do. Does God want you to eat that whole box of crackers and not share? Well, there is. And but, but a gazillion days from now, I can have them. But think about all the things that God gives us that he wants us to share. Does God like us to share the rain? Or does he want it just to be our rain? Yeah. Does God want us to share the sunshine? That, yeah, because it's there, there's a lot of us. It's there. for everybody. Does God want us to share his son, Jesus? Does he want us to share all the love that Jesus gives us? That's kind of like the crackers. I think you need to share. Oh. And I brought little bags so that everybody could have some. So I think you ought to work on that. So while Shan is working on sharing, sharing is hard, isn't it? But you know what? Jesus was talking to some friends one day, and he told them a story about a really, 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 really rich man who lived in a really, 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 really big house, and he had a lot of food. You need to pick that up. Okay. And he had so much food that it didn't fit in his barn. Does everybody know what a barn is? A lot of times there's animals in a barn. He kept all of his food in a barn, and he looked, and the barn was full. So you know what he did? Do you think he decided, I have a lot of food, so I'm going to go share with people that maybe have hungry tummies? Yes. Goldfish are in your car right now? You know what? That's a really good thing to have. It is, because you just never know when you're going to get hungry. But he had all of this food, and instead of sharing, he built a bigger barn. You remember how Shan was saying that he was going to put his goldfish in this big bag? And that's not a good idea, is it? It's always so much better to share. And I think that it's important for us to remember that everything God gives us, he doesn't say, I'm only going to give it to you once. He gives it to us forever. So we're always going to have the things that we need with God. And that's a really special thing, and that makes my heart happy. So Shan's going to finish putting goldfish in little crackers, and we're going to say a really fast little prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for these children and their joy and their innocence and their zest for life. We ask that you just fill all of our hearts with your love and joy and help us to remember that everything you've given us is given freely and you want us to pass that on. And we just need to keep on giving the way that you do. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
think this is where, oh, there we go. Um, it is with sadness that I have to announce that Erin, this is Erin's last day with us. Um, she has been such a loyal help in just her love and caring for these children. The last four years that you've been here has been amazing. And we have just really appreciated Erin's time with us. Um, but she has um, decided that it's, it's time for her and Kennedy to, move, to kind of move on. And um, so we're going to miss them. And we wanted to have an opportunity to thank them for all they've done. And Jean has a couple of words she'd like to say. You know, very important ministry of any church is when young parents come in, they know they have a good nursery to leave their children, that know they will be loved and cared for. And Erin has done this with organizing our volunteers, making sure we have snacks in the nursery for our children. So we do appreciate it. You will be missed. Miss Kennedy, we're going to miss you in our children's programs, and we, we wish you well. So we do have a gift for um, Aaron. Thank you so much. And we are taking a love offering at the end of the service. We'll have some members of the uh, SPRC standing by the door. Uh, if you could contribute, that would be really great. We'd appreciate it. So uh, Aaron, thank you again for everything that you have done.
Good morning. Today's scripture comes from the book of Luke, chapter 12, lines 13 to 21. Someone in the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. But he said to him, Friend, who sent me to be a judge or arbitrator over you? And he said to them, Take care, be on your guard against all kinds of greed, for one's life does not consist in abundance of possessions. Then he told them a parable. The land of a rich man produced abundantly. And he thought to himself, what should I do? For I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build larger ones. And there I will store my, all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, you fool, this very night your life is being demanded of you. And the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So it is with those who store up treasures for themselves but are not rich towards God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Most gracious and loving God, we thank you for the blessings of your spirit that is with us. Let your spirit anoint me now as I speak, that it will be you who speak through me. 
and open all our hearts and minds to receive your word and grow by it. That in everything we do, we may glorify and serve you. For this we pray in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Last week, we learned that we are at the crossroads between God and mammon. And that's where we live, basically, because every day of our lives, we're being forced to make a decision. What is going to determine to draw our attention? What is going to grab hold of us and hold us? And the simple reality is, is that that's not an easy place to be in, not in this culture, not in this world. For many years now, our society has been lifting up, if you will, mammon. Lifting up things that it tells us will make us happy. It tells us that this is what fulfillment is. This is what success is. This is what is important. I don't know whether you all remember a show that was very strong in the 80s called Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous. Yeah, it, we used to watch that show. And I will say this, that it, it did a lot to, to get people to think that, ooh, there's something to aspire to. Ooh, I'd like to have that life. Well, simple reality is, is that this story today that Jesus tells in response to a question that is put to him about, tell my brother to share the inheritance with me, gets at the crux of what happens when we fail to seek first the kingdom of God. Now you see from the title up there, rich in things and poor with God, and you have contrasting pictures of lots of money and empty hands. In the story, this individual is very, very fortunate. He's got a bumper crop. He has enjoyed a, a great celebration of harvest. He's got one problem. His barns are too small. So he decides that the answer is to tear down his barns and build bigger ones so that he can hold on, to use Shan's image, his crackers. So he does that. The next picture, I think, helps us. There it is. He's living in the wealth of the moment. And he is happy. Oh, my goodness. He is just overjoyed. He thinks that he's got everything covered. And that's how it often feels, doesn't it? How many of us in here this morning, this is purely rhetorical, but how many of us in here this morning have ever said to ourselves, oh, if I just get such and such, then I'll be happy. Fill this blank in. What is such and such? What is your blank that you think is going to make you happy? I've spent a lifetime trying to fill in that blank. And I've got to be honest with you, as I shared with you last week, Amazon is making that a whole lot easier with free shipping. <laughs> the simple reality is, is that what fills in the blanks for us defines what is God for us. What fills in the blanks for us defines what God is for us. The next picture, well, we'll wait on that one. The reality is, is that for a lot of us today, we are in a position where we think our security is in what we can hold. So there's that picture. 
There's Linus sitting up there with his security blanket. And he is just content. Look at that. I mean, that, that oh, that reminds me of my boys when they were growing up. My, both our sons had a security blanket. And Joshua had this beautiful one. I mean, it was, I don't know how to describe it. It had little animals around the side of it that, that was sort of worked into the fabric. And after he had it for a while, you couldn't tell that there was any animals on it at all. We had to tie knots in it to hold it together. Eventually, it went in a drawer. We found another blanket just like it, and we put it in there just so we could say, this is what it used to look like, this is what it became. But it's that lower right-hand picture that I think really kind of gets at it, because the more we put our security in things, that's how it feels. We're afraid that things are going to come along and grab grab what we think is going to be security. In this case, it's Snoopy. But in life, what is it? Is it a coming hurricane or a tornado? Is it a fire? A lot of people out in California don't even feel like Linus does down there in that bottom picture. That blanket's long gone. Is it a recession or depression that lowers your stock portfolio and your savings? Suddenly you have less money than you had yesterday. Do you know what the, the number one thing that people are looking into now? Security companies. Putting in security equipment in your house that will alert police if you get a break-in. And people are looking into security companies that will protect their information. It's become the rage. The simple reality is, is that the more we look at what we have, the more we will become concerned with how to protect it. That thought goes back as far as human condition does. As long as there have been humans walking this planet, the need for security has always existed. But I wonder sometimes if it isn't perpetuated. For example, in the Jewish faith, the idea of blessedness from God was directly tied with one's affluence. The more one was blessed with material affluence, the more one was deemed blessed by God. It's no wonder this man in the story does what he does because his theology tells him that this is a blessing from God. And we have the same kind of theology circulating out here in various prosperity gospels that are being preached. That you too can have great riches. You too can have great wealth. You too can have the good life. But how do you ration that message up against this parable? How do you deal with the reality that Jesus says that's not so? Now, am I standing up here telling you that it's bad to be rich? No. No, it's not bad to be rich. Unless you're poor. Then you have kind of a contemptuous attitude toward the rich. But it's not bad to be rich. It's not sinful to be rich. It's not, it's not sinful to have things. It's not sinful to be well off. That's not the problem. The problem is, is the emphasis you give it. In my experience, as I shared with you last week, is that a lot of things I thought would make me happy now just take up place in my life. The next slide kind of helps us grab that. Material things are like flowers. They fade with time. Remember those plates everybody used to buy that they put up around their dining room and kitchen? Everybody thought that those things were going to be, you know, an investment. 
that somebody somewhere down the road, you could sell these and, and get a return on your investment. I can't tell you how many flea markets I've gone to that has those, and everybody's looking at them, and they're going for a buck. Franklin Mint got a lot of people buying their stuff, but the idea that it would gain in value, I bought two of their chess sets. I couldn't give them away. The simple reality is, is that over time, our worldly possessions can fade because a lot of things that we tend to invest in, to put it simply, are time sensitive, meaning they're good for now, but succeeding generations aren't interested. Case in point, Roberta and I went into Appomattox a few years back, and we were going through some of the antique shops. And Roberta likes dishes. She likes these unique dishes. Uh, her grandmother had many, and I think it's somewhat connected to that. But anyway, she likes unique dishes, and we were looking at some of the dishes and so forth, and I came across this crystal. I mean, crystal. The good stuff, leaded stuff. And I'm looking at it, and I flipped it over expecting to see a really great price, and I think, wow, they're giving this stuff away. <laughs> and I went over, and I... I picked up the little set of glasses, and I went over, and I went to pay my, I told everybody, look at this, look at this. And the lady looked down, and she says, nobody wants this stuff anymore. And I said, why not? She says, they just don't. What was very valuable 100 years ago we take for granted today, don't we? Look how much money your cell phone cost. Roberta and I have been looking at cell phones. My son actually ended up buying one. And we've been looking at cell phones, and my goodness, have you seen what the prices are doing? Mine is four and a half years old, and I'm not giving it up. Because the moment I buy it, wait three months, they'll come out with a whole new model. The reality of the world we live in today is that it wants us to put value in things rather than God. Because if we put value in God, things become less important. As I said, it's no sin to be rich. It's no sin to be well off. It's no sin to have nice things. It's no sin to take vacations, wonderful vacations. It's no sin to do any of the things that we see people do except when they take priority. The next slide, I think, gives us a little bit of perspective. There's those hands again. You see, the Bible clearly states that the person that is truly blessed of God is the person who recognizes he's spiritually poor. We can be rich in things, folks. We can have money in the bank, beautiful house, brand new, shiny, expensive car. We can take wonderful vacations. We can do all of those things and be wanting when it comes to God. Because you see, God's not impressed with that stuff. God's never impressed with that stuff. He doesn't care what side of the tracks you come from. God doesn't care where you grow up. He doesn't care what clothes you wear or where you work. He doesn't care how much you make. God cares about one thing. He cares about one thing, the condition of your soul. That's what he cares about. Because you see, when everything in this world is finished, that's all you've got left. That's all that's going back to God is what you were given by God. The rest of it stays here for everybody else to argue with. 
The biggest problem with us is, is that we think the things that make us happy are blessings from God. The real blessings from God is God. The real blessings of God is God. It says, I need to read it down here. I can't read it up there. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Seeking after the kingdom first means seeking after God. Everything else, everything else is tenuous. The last slide says it very well. When we put our faith in God, when we put God first, when we put the kingdom of God first, it says in Philippians 4, 7, and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. You heard that wonderful quartet just a little bit ago saying, I'd rather have Jesus. I'd rather have Jesus. It was so beautiful. And we were so moved to hear it. But imagine if we took our lives and patterned it after that message. If we really put Jesus first, what would happen? What would happen to our idea of material wealth? What would happen to the value we place on material possessions? We're going to sing a song. And what we have in this song is a proclamation. My hope is built. My hope is built on what? As you sing these words, let them permeate your heart.
most gracious and loving God. Bless these gifts. Use them well for the ministry of Jesus Christ, through this, your church, through us, your servants. For this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. And let us go to the Lord in prayer. Most gracious and loving God, as always, in the past week, we've seen many needs arise. We pray for those in California fighting fires and those who have already lost their lives and those who risked their lives, those who've lost everything except their lives. We pray for them. For there is nothing worse in this world than to find ourselves in want and need, except to be without you. Most gracious and loving God, we have gathered here as your family and your congregation to say goodbye to a great saint. But we remember many other saints, O oh God, who live in dark places in their lives and health who are looking for light to guide them, those who are struggling with life and death issues, those who are gathering bedsides, waiting for a loved one to die. Be with them. Strengthen and support the family. Comfort the sick. We pray for those, O oh God, who are still recovering from disaster, both here in the continental United States as well as surrounding areas and territories. We pray for those people who struggle to survive, to get by, to rebuild. We pray for those who are in harm's way, seeking to help, trying to rebuild, to offer comfort and assistance. Keep them all safe. And guide our thoughts and our actions to participate in this to the best of our abilities. We pray for those, O oh God, who are recovering from illness, recovering from injury, Hear their names now. We pray also, as always, for our leaders, both here in the United States as well as around the world. These are trying times, and we constantly live in fear because of them. But come and speak to our hearts, O oh God. Speak to our hearts that can believe in you beyond our fears and trust you. And guide those around us who are in positions of authority to hear you as well. Guide our church guide this church. The decisions we make, O oh God, will be full of grace. That it will be full of your love and compassion, but guided by you and your spirit to do what is right and just. For we are disciples of Jesus Christ who teaches us to pray, Our Father,
probably been noticing that we've been not racing out during the benediction. It goes along with what we heard today about putting God first. So many times we get in a hurry. We get in a hurry for things we want. We get in a hurry for things we think make us happy. And in our hurriedness, God gets lost. Sometimes it's because we just don't invite God along for it. And sometimes it's because what we're chasing after, God has nothing to do with. I don't know. I don't know what your mammon is. I know what mine is. And I wrestle with it every day. As I get older, I find that what's important to me isn't what it used to be. Having things isn't nearly as important as relationships. They matter far more. I find myself not wanting to purchase things that just take up space. I'd rather spend money on bringing friends together and fellowshipping. Jesus says, seek first the kingdom of God. For us, that means understanding what the kingdom is and what it's not. It's not bigger barns. It's not bigger homes. It's not bigger bank accounts. It's not bigger vacations. It's community. It's the kingdom of people. May we seek the kingdom because that's where God resides. Go in the Spirit of God, dwell in the Spirit of God, and let God dwell in you. Amen. <laughs>